Hi guys, welcome back to the JNIT framework tutorial. In this session, we are going to write a JNIT test cases for basic arithmetic operations. Let's go ahead and start. So I have the basic arithmetic operations class already ready. In this, we have um, methods for sum of the two numbers, subtraction of the two numbers, multiplication for the two numbers and the division of two numbers. Now, by using the JNIT framework, we are going to write a unit test cases for these four methods. Let us go ahead and start. Now I want to cover, uh, I want to cover most of the annotations what, whatever we have uh, seen earlier so that it is a, a recap and we can use in our uh, whenever you write any test, uh, test cases it will be help for us. Okay, so let us go ahead and test. Let us give the class name as test. Basic arithmetic um, arithmetic operations operations demo and finish it so first let us write a unit test case so in order to do that first we need to create an object for the basic arithmetic operations so private basic arithmetic operations let it be as it is for now and then public void create object and I want to cover like a at the rate of before annotations now uh, or import from the org dot jnit and here you can go ahead and create arithmetic operations is equal to new arithmetic operations Oh, okay, I created an object. Now I can write a unit test case. Public void test sum of two numbers. Okay. So now we need the two inputs. Input one equal, oh, sorry, two integer values we need. Int input one equal to 10 int input 2 equal to 20. Now I need to write a, I need to assert it. So assert dot I need to say assert equals of 30 but I need to call the arithmetic operations dot sum of two numbers that is input one comma input two. Okay, so this is my asset. Now let us see, I need to get the asset from the org dot, org dot jnit. Okay, so as we are expecting result is 30, and the whatever the input we have given 10 plus 20 so ideally this should be written 30 hence when you execute this particular unit test case it should succeeded in order to say it is a test case you need to annotate with the at the rate of test uh, import from the org dot j init now let us go ahead and run as jnit test so what it do is first it is going to create this object and then it will executing the unit test case hence that is the reason it didn't throw any null pointer exception for example if i don't put this particular um, at the rate of before annotation you can see what is going to happen see here null pointer exception has thrown so that means whenever you annotated any method with the at the rate of before it is executing the test case before executing this test case this particular method will be executed okay now this is for the sum of the two numbers similarly let me write few more test cases okay so sum of two numbers we have seen and then test sub, subtraction 
of two numbers and similarly multiplication of two numbers and similarly division of two numbers this is okay so now i need to change this particular so sum we have seen and then subtraction what happens is this is going to be um, subtraction of the two numbers when i say um, subtraction of two numbers the 10 minus 20 this is going to be minus 10 and this is multiplication so 10 into 20 this is 200 and here we need to call multiplication of the two numbers okay and finally division so 10 by 20 it is almost 0 0.5 it will come so 0 0.5 it is float 10 by 20 so 1 by 2 so 0 0.5 float value it will come okay so this is again division of two numbers let us say float okay so i think we have covered the test cases for the four the methods now let us go ahead and run this program the run this uh, test cases once again then we can see where it has failing so a division of two numbers is failing because it is expected value expected value and also it is expecting a delta so you can say delta value as 0 0.000 okay so so there is some um, expected was 0 0.5 but uh, this is the 0.0, .0 it came so let us go ahead and give some uh, realistic numbers in this in this case let us go 40 and this is 10 okay so then ideally what happens is this is going to return 0 or uh, 4.0 okay so now let us go ahead and run this program okay so all the test cases has been completed successfully okay so this is how basically you are going to write an unit test cases for the each um, each method whatever it is available in the java now let us consider here i implemented it at the rate of before that means an object will be created before actually executing one test case for example in this case what happened is it, it might have created it it has created four objects instead of that for example you want only one object for the all these test cases then what you can do is you need to annotate it with the at the rate of before class and uh, so at the rate of uh, before class if you put this way then what is going to happen is let us import this one then what is going to happen here is public we need to uh, change this one to the static and then as this is the static context we need to change this one also to the static okay now in this case what is going to happen is it is going to create only one object okay and if i run this uh, program you can still see the same uh, it will execute the all the test cases successfully but the difference here is previously it is going to create a four um, objects for the basic arithmetic operations but in this case only one it will be executed now once you execute all the test cases now let us consider you want to make this object to the null then public void sorry public static y white 
and close object now arithmetic operations equal to now let us consider now okay now when i go ahead and run this program again you will see this similar output so sorry i didn't annotate anything here right so at the rate of after class now what happens is once it executed the all the um, uh, test cases the arithmetic operations will be uh, assigned to the null so that it will be collected by the garbage collector so at the rate of um, before or the after classes basically helpful whenever you are working with like a uh, streams or the database connection so you can get a database connection only once and once you completed the your test cases you can close that connection similarly whenever you are handling the files then you can open the file stream or the getting the uh, file reading the um, file input stream you can do from the at the rate of before uh, you can open the stream and once you are done with the all the test cases finally you can close the streams here so this is how basically we are going to write the jnit test cases for the java methods hope you clear with the concept thanks for watching have a nice day